What do you do when your eyes can no longer be trusted? When you think you're looking at something real, but it clearly can't be real. What if everybody is empowered to create anything they want? Let me just pause for a second and show you something that will absolutely blow your mind. Super supersonic speed. JJ Fair. Uh, summer, lemme, doom, lemme, you assume I'm a human. What I gotta do to get it through to you? I'm superhuman, innovative, and I made a rubble. So that anything you say is sick of shaking off of me and it'll glue to you. And devastating more than ever, demonstrating how to give them. An audience I feel like it's levitating, never fading And I know the haters are forever waiting for the day that they can say I fell off, they'll be celebrating Cause I know the way to get them motivated I make elevating music, you make elevator music Oh, he's too mainstream Well, that's what they do when they get jealous, they confuse it It's not hip-hop, it's pop Cause I found a hell of way to fuse it An AA with an AK melee Finish at it like a play date But a vacay retreat like a vacay mayday This beat is cray-cray, Ray J, H-A-H-A-H-A Laughing all the way to the bank I spray flames that cannot tame or placate the monster You get in my way, I'ma feed you to the monster Normal during the day, but I I turn to a monster when the moon shines like ice road trucker. We were good, we were gold. Can the dream that can be so? We were right till we were build a home that was deeper. Mm, I didn't wanna leave. Now what you're seeing there was obviously fake, but how real did it look? This new paper called Emo from the Alibaba group promises to give everybody the ability to simply take an image, take a piece of audio or song and make the person in the image sing that song or at least look like they are. And it looks really good. So let's take a step back and look how they actually accomplished this because all of a sudden, we're not gonna be able to believe anything that we're seeing online. Emo, Emote Portrait Alive, generative expressive portrait videos with audio to video diffusion model under weak conditions. A lot of words, but all that means is you upload an image, you upload some audio, and the image will look like it's either speaking the dialogue or singing the song. So here's an example. We have audio input right here, talking, speaking, singing, and then we have four base images. This first one is from an old movie. I forget what it is, but it's from an old movie. This one is obviously the Mona Lisa. This one is from the Sora video. So this is AI generated, and that is super cool to think about for a second. An AI generated woman who is who walks around a virtual world, looks completely real, can now look like she's singing or talking anything that we want. Then this final one, I'm sorry, I don't know who this is, maybe anime, it says anime right there, but that's it. You take that base image and it looks like they are talking or singing. Now, usually when you see something like this, you just see the lips moving, but it's so much more than that. As they're singing, as they're speaking, their facial expression changes, the tilt of their head changes, obviously the mouth and the lips moving match the words. Super impressive. Now let's take a look at this. In this first example, we have the input audio, but it's gonna be two things. First, we have a song, a very popular song. And then in the second example, from the same image, we have somebody talking. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. We were just kids when we fell in love, not knowing what. When I was a kid, I feel like you heard the thing, you heard the term, don't cry. You don't need to cry. Crying is the most beautiful thing you can do. I encourage people to cry. I cry all the time. And I think it's the most healthy. And take a look at this. You remember the woman from the Tokyo landscape, the Sora generated video, completely fake, not a real person. All of a sudden we have this person speaking up here, which is the vocal source. We have the reference image and then look how incredible the generated video is. Everything looks perfect. It could be her speaking. Yeah, I think this is right now an inflection point where we're sort of 
you know, redefining how we interact with with uh, digital information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's through, you know, the form of these AI systems that we collaborate with. And uh, maybe we have several of them and maybe they all have different competences. And maybe we have a general one that kind of follows us around everywhere, knows everything about, uh, you know, my context, what I've been up to today, um, what my goals are um, sort of in life. So let's take a look at how this actually works. But first, a quick message from today's sponsor. Wow, look at this. Okay, so you're probably wondering what I am so impressed with. And what I'm actually talking about is Grok. You've probably heard of them recently because of their insane inference speeds. Grok is the creator of the world's first LPU inference engine. LPU stands for Language Processing Unit, and it is a brand new architecture for large language models and generative AI. And it runs faster than anything else I've ever seen. I'm talking about 500 plus tokens per second. Check out these recent inference speed benchmarks by AnyScale and Artificial Analysis. Grok is leading the pack. So let's check out the speed with this quick prompt. I'm gonna ask it, tell me about MOE, LLMs, but explain it to me like I'm seven years old so I can easily understand it. Look at how fast that is, 518 tokens per second. Now translate your answer to French. Boom, French. 520 tokens per second. Now imagine powering AI agents with that type of inference speed. So I'm gonna be covering a lot more about Grok in the coming weeks because I'm so excited about it. But in the meantime, if you're wondering how to get access, go to this link right here. I'm also gonna drop the link in the description below so you can click it there. So go to grok.link slash Berman API to get access today. Thanks so much to the sponsor of this video, Grok. And now back to the video. We have the reference image. Then they add the motion frames and the motion frames are generated during this diffusion process. And this is actually a pretty complex process. So they take the audio, the face recognition, the noisy latent layer, the head speed, the speed encoder, the wave to VEC, all things that we've talked about in previous videos, put it all together and they're able to get the generated frames. And then they pass that back, layer on the audio, and then you have the final result. And here's the paper, let's take a quick look. We propose Emo, an expressive audio-driven portrait video generation framework. Input a single reference image and the vocal audio, talking, singing. Our method can generate vocal avatar videos with expressive facial expressions and various head poses. Meanwhile, we can generate videos with any duration depending on the length of the input audio. That any duration piece is really interesting because typically when you're doing text a video, you have a pretty hard limit. Right now, Sora is 60 seconds, for example. And the abstract says, we tackle the challenge of enhancing the realism and expressiveness in talking head video generation by focusing on the dynamic and nuanced relationship between audio cues and facial movements. And that's really their unique innovation here. They've been able to read the audio and understand when somebody's speaking or singing what their head will likely look like as they're doing those things. Then they take that understanding and apply it to the base image. Now here's something really important. We identify the limitations of traditional techniques that often fail to capture the full spectrum of human expressions and the uniqueness of individual facial styles. That is what I was talking about. Typically, when you have an avatar software and you're giving it something to say, you only really see the mouth moving with some very basic head movement, but this takes it to another level. They also go on to say, this approach eliminates the need for intermediate representations or complex pre-processing, streamlining the creation of talking head videos that exhibit a high degree of visual and emotional fidelity, closely aligned with the nuances present in the audio input. Again, the fact that that takes no pre-processing is absolutely insane. And their discovery is audio signals are rich in information related to facial expressions. And that makes sense. Literally, as I was just saying, facial expressions, my eyebrows went up because I was excited about that. So it really does translate and I had never thought of that. Very cool insight. Theoretically enabling models to generate a diverse array of expressive facial movements. However, integrating audio with diffusion models is not a straightforward task due to the ambiguity inherent in the mapping between audio and facial expression. And that is what they solved. How do you map the audio with how the face looks? And not only that, how do you take a static image 
and generate video from that static image that represents the different facial movements. So typically, and here's what has happened previously, this issue can lead to instability in the videos produced by the model manifesting as facial distortions or jittering between video frames. And in severe cases may even result in the complete collapse of the video. And to fix that, they have incorporated stable control mechanisms into our model, namely a speed controller and a face region controller to enhance stability during the generation process. And how did they actually train their model? We constructed a vast and diverse audio video data set amassing over 250 hours of footage. And just pausing for a second, 250 hours doesn't really seem like that much for any modern model and more than 150 million images. Now that's a lot. This expansive data set encompasses a wide range of content, including speeches, film and television clips and singing performances and covers multiple languages such as Chinese and English. And here you can see different benchmarks and these are qualitative comparisons with several talking head generation works. So these are the previous ones like Dream Talk, Sad Talker, Wave to Lip, and then they have Hours. And we can see four out of the five benchmarks the new technique has won. So what are some of the limitations? The first limitation is it is more time consuming compared to methods that do not rely on diffusion models. And that makes sense. If you've ever tried to create something with Dolly or any of the other diffusion models out there, they take a long time to generate and they take a lot of processing power, but they don't require pre-processing. Second, since we do not use any explicit control signals to control the character's motion, it may result in the inadvertent generation of other body parts, such as hands leading to artifacts in the video. Because they're not actually controlling for different parts of the body and they really just want the face and the head, they sometimes suffer from those body parts appearing in the video. Let me just play a couple more examples for you. You wanna know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker and a fiend. And one night, he goes off crazier than usual. Mommy gets the kitchen knife to defend herself. He doesn't like that. Not one bit. So, me watching, he takes the knife to her, laughing while he does it. He turns to me and he says, why so serious? He comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. And... Why so serious? <clears throat> yes. One. And in this manner. He was to imagine me his love, his mistress, and I set him every day to woo me, at which time would I, being but a moonish youth, grieve, be effeminate, changeable, longing and liking, proud, fantastical, apish, shallow. Now, one last thing I want to talk about in this video. And it may seem unrelated at first, but in fact, stay with me and you'll see that it is very related. Now, we have a video from Jensen Huang, and he is the CEO of NVIDIA, now the third largest company in the world. And he argues that we should stop saying kids should learn to code. I've been saying for a while that programming is going to die. And maybe I should add some nuance. Programming as we know it is going to die. And there's a couple ways to interpret that. But let me play Jensen Huang's video and then I'll speak a little bit more about it. I want to say something and it's, it's going to sound completely opposite of what people feel. Over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on the stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program and that the programming language is human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle of artificial intelligence. The countries, the people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology or in education of young people or in manufacturing or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do. It is vital that we upskill everyone and the upskilling process, I, I believe, will be delightful, surprising. 
Okay, so what he's saying is something that I've been talking about for a little while now. First, I wanna get this out of the way. I am still going to teach my kids how to code simply because it actually helps you think about thinking. It helps you think better. It helps you think systematically. And all of these skills are very important when you're problem solving. But as he's saying, problem solving is the bigger value. Learning how to solve problems, learning how to get what you want from a large language model is going to be super important. Now, if programming is dead and nobody are programmers, then technically everybody is a programmer at that point because natural language is the language of computers. And that is gonna be the case with large language models and artificial intelligence. So how does this relate to the Emo project? Well, it seems faster than most people are predicting things that were previously really hard to do, such as creating video, Sora, creating video games, Genie, creating avatars that look realistic, Emo, controlling robots, mimic gen, and creating true AI to live their lives, Voyager and Minecraft. All of these things are becoming easier and easier. And as all of these problems get solved with large language models, the language of large language models is going to be natural language. So I still encourage you, if you don't know how to code, learn the basics. You don't need to go that deep into it anymore. And I'm definitely gonna teach my kids how to code just so they know how to think systematically. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.